Hell yeah. This is just happy accident generator, basically. Ah, what is that? Oh, that's a good one. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> Let's add glitches. Hi, it is I again. I definitely won't be able to keep up a daily uploading schedule, but I have a lot of stuff to show you right now that I'm really excited about. So today I actually have one of my favorite things that I have experimented with recently for you. You might have noticed so far, like uh, yesterday's tutorial was all about like tons of effects in a row, creating like glitches and chaos and, and just like creating some sort of effects chain that you can run audio through or a synth or whatever, and it just gives you like unpredictable glitchy madness. And then today's going to be about an easy way to turn those really long samples full of chaotic glitches into actual cool phrases and ideas and patterns for a song. So let me show you how I've been doing this. So at some point last year I posted a video about Ableton racks I've been making and maybe some of you remember the hyper chorus thing where it's like a bunch of choruses in a row and then these are all remote controlled by the macros over here. By the way you can get the old chorus and also the old flanger and old phaser etc under PAX core library devices, audio effects, and then at the bottom there should be a folder called legacy that you can get the old ones if you want to use those instead. They're not gone. So this kind of setup with like tons of the same effect in a row works pretty great also for like pitch shifters or flangers or phasers to get some cool glitchy stuff. And I want to combine this with what we did in the last video, the random LFOs, and I'm just going to connect those to these macros real quick. So now with the random LFOs on the hyper chorus, we get this kind of stuff. Really cool, like spectrally sounding metallic chaos. And uh, I'm gonna adjust some of these LFO settings a little bit because I feel like if this LFO amount stays a little bit lower, it sounds a little bit cooler. And maybe uh, delay time also a little bit further down. Or you can even just try and move the offset here. <laughs> Absolute madness. So I decided to combine that randomized hyper chorus with the stuff from the last video. So in this insane chain, we've got the random hyper chorus here. Then there is a chain of uh, different frequency shifters, also all differently modulated. Then we've got this cool shifty EQ, as it does that kind of stuff followed by the delay thing from the last video where it's like going through a delay first that's randomized and then splitting left and right, going through different delays and so on. And then at the end here, we have an auto pan that's also getting randomized and a limiter for safety. So without all these effects, it's just a square wave right now with quite some latency. And then if I turn this on, we get something like So that's some beautiful glitchy noise. And to make it a little more tonal, I put a retune and a pitch map in this chain before the auto pan. So now we've got. And now I'm just gonna record like two long files with this effects chain and while I record I'm just gonna like turn the macros a little bit just to get some variation into the sound and I'll make one version without pitch map and retune and one version that is colorized. <laughs> All right, that's a good amount of colorful stuff. Now I've got a couple pretty long recordings of just random glitches, two of them with pitch map on it, two of them without. 
So now that we have these, as sound designers call them, mud pies, how to turn those into like a cool pattern? And what's the easiest way to do that? So I've got a really neat trick for you, and I'm gonna put this uh, into the description actually just as like a download with these files as well. Like you can you can download these, and this time it won't be Patreon exclusive, so I might give this one away for free, but it's definitely my favorite and most useful of all things I've like built out of effects recently. So my idea was if you use the simpler on slice mode and then you drop like a long file into it, like one of these that we just made and it slices it at the transients, maybe set the sensitivity a little bit lower so that it spreads out over the whole thing. Now, if I press a C1, then it should play the first slice. <laughs> Yep, it do. A little bit of silence at the beginning, so I'm gonna move the start point over here. But now, I'm gonna do two little changes. First of all, I'm gonna change it from trigger to gate mode, so now it's only playing the slice for as long as the note is actually held. And if I go up a semitone to like C sharp, that's slice number two, D is slice number three, and so on and so forth. Everyone who's like put an aim and break into this kind of knows how this works. But you can kind of like have Ableton create patterns for you. So you can put an arpeggiator before this, and now, if I just hold C1 down, it plays C1, and then it plays one additional step that's an octave up. But I can say, hey, maybe just don't go up an octave with each step, just go up one semitone. But do that seven additional times to the one note that I'm playing. So now we should get slice one to eight, and each of those should be a 16th note long. Hell yeah. And you can move around the starting position here, and then if you hold a C1, it'll play different slices. You can also tell the arpeggiator to not jump one, but maybe two semitones every step. And you can kind of see that here, how it's like skipping this one, for example. Or skip two or skip eight. So immediately just with the control of where this starts and how many steps and how far apart these steps are, like just between these couple of parameters, you can already get like a lot of different phrases out of this. But I've already put all of this together in an instrument rack for you that I wanna show you now, and I think it's awesome. I give you the VR Super Slicer. I would really love to turn this into its own plugin at some point in my life, that would be nice. And then this would have some additional features and be a little easier to use, but I try to make it as user-friendly as possible. So when you load this instrument rack, you might not have a sample over here, and the simpler might just be empty. That's where you drop your mud pie, your crazy glitchy long file. And then all you need to do on the MIDI side is kind of just hold down a C1 note. I'm just gonna draw this in here real quick. Hold it up until like here. You can also make it twice as long if you want. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put these in. We can we can add some variations here in the MIDI later, but you can do a lot with just holding a C1 note. Also, let me just grab some drums real quick so we have like a rhythm in the back to have some reference. All right, we got some drums playing in the background, and now let's grab let's grab the non-pitch mapped recording of glitches from earlier. I'm just gonna drag that in here. If this is too long for you, obviously you can zoom in here, but you can also um, make these files a little bit shorter in the project file by just doing like a command E so it does a slice and then command J so it consolidates this into its own clip. Then you don't have to work with really long files, but I do like having a longer file in here because I, then I can like find more variations like this. Cool, I've got my sidechain trigger here and I'm gonna zoom in on this so we can see the slices a bit better. I'm actually just, just straight from the start before even listening to it, I'm gonna turn the transient sensitivity down a little bit because now it'll only do slices at parts where there really is like a loud transient and where there is something happening. It just usually makes this endeavor a little more successful. All right, okay, let's look over here to the left. These are the main controls for how this is gonna be sliced. So we've got a synced rate. You can turn sync on or off. Then this is your free rate over here if sync is off. This is how many steps are gonna be added after the one note you're holding. This is how many notes it's gonna jump each step. How long it's gonna hold each note for. If it's 16th notes, then this on 50% would be only a 30 second note. So this always scales with the speed. Then there's a little pitch envelope that I've linked uh, in from the simpler to these two macros. This is a little bit of fade in and fade out uh, to prevent clicking. Then this is the internal spread of the simpler and some post compression and if you turn this all the way up it adds in a vocoder. So before looking at this other stuff let's see what this sounds like first. Uh, all right but could be better let's find some cool spots here. So 
So that's kind of neat. I'm going to add in a sub as well because this is like more mid basic literary material. I'm just going to put a sub under this so this overall sounds a little weightier. So far so good. Now we got a little bit of sub in the background as well. And now let me show you how this thing can actually go really crazy and what's so fun about it. So first of all, I really like changing the amount of steps that it is supposed to add. So let's say we're still in 16th notes, but I'm going to change this to two. Then you get like a syncopated polymeter type rhythm. I'm also going to move every fourth note like up an octave. So we have some variation there. And then let's try a different starting position. So this part here actually sounds pretty cool. And maybe I want to add a little bit of this like internal pitch envelope that the simpler has. So we turn this up to like maybe plus 24. Gives it kind of like a lasery zap attack. And maybe to change like the feel of this fill, I'm just gonna do some more like I was gonna do some variation on the notes here, maybe even just repeat one a couple of times for some glitchy stuff. Kind of like that. And then one more variation here, maybe dun to dun to dun to dun to dun. It's just gonna like do this a couple of times in a row. Something like dun to dun to dun to dun to. And then uh, maybe something like this. Okay, cool. Um, now let's have a look at these other uh, little macros here in the middle. So what I've done here is I've made like random generators for different parameters of the simpler. So first of all, I've um, I've sort of made like a phrase generator. So instead of just like this, ar the arpeggiator that's hidden in this, going from one slice to the next, this uh, rack over here, the phrase generator, kind of like generates a random phrase out of this out of the next couple of slices and it can even like repeat certain slices twice and you generate a new phrase by hitting R up here so if this is to the left it's just off and it'll just play the standard mode that's selected over here but if I hit R and turn this up then we're gonna get three different slices picked for this pattern try again try again That's pretty cool too. And if you don't like it, you can just turn this off. If you're back with the old one. I'm just gonna change this pattern to use like to use like seven steps so that we have like so we hear like a bigger variety of sounds right uh, just for the moment. Then this also again works with the phrase generator. So either all played in order or you'll hear the last ones being repeated. I'm gonna hit R again. Nice, that's a cool pattern. Let, let me just keep doing this a couple of times more. That sounds cool too. That's sick too, nice. Okay, next up, this glitch gen. This thing basically changes those 16th notes to not just trigger a slice every 16th note, but also every 16th note that slice may be triggered like way faster, kind of like a ratchet effect where, where like one, like the first of those eight slices that it's playing right now might be triggered at 64th notes or something, or 32nd. Um, sounds somewhat like this. Definitely gets you like more syncopated wonky rhythms. I'm just gonna keep clicking uh, randomize up here a couple of times and uh, show you what this sounds like. Cool. Definitely like definitely destroys the straight 16th pattern and gives you something more wonky and more offbeat. The chop generator basically just decides which 16th notes to turn off. So um, and this isn't a full like off on kind of thing. It's just the higher you turn it, the more 16th notes seem to be missing. Um, let me show you. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to turn this up here, maybe. Okay, the second one's missing now. I'm going to hit R. So this in combination with the glitch generator and the phrase generator already gives you like tons of options how a loop 
might turn out to be. This auto pattern here is pretty straightforward. It just automatically like goes left, right, left, right at the speed of the slices, um, um, or alternatively, right, left, right, left. So if there's a 16th notes, I'll turn it up or all the way down, like the inverse version. And then the last thing here, uh, the pitch glitch, this also just turns up the strength if you turn this knob up. What this does is it gives each slice, each 16th note, a random pitch, but also just in a set of like half a bar. So I'm gonna turn this all the way up and then it should sound pretty crazy. I'm gonna just blend it in so you'll hear what it does. That's it, random. <laughs> The bias down here kind of like decides if it's supposed to go more towards pitching it up or more towards pitching it down. If it's in the middle, then it's like evenly distributed. You can also go off the grid by changing this knob here to off so it's not synced anymore. Now this free rate knob is controlling how fast the samples are being triggered. Ah! Ah, it's so cool. I love this, it's just happy accident generator basically. The free mode is especially fun if you go a little faster and then also if you have fewer steps, like... Okay, that sounds like 16th now, it's gonna go a little faster. And that's cool, that sounds like Quibris, R.I.P. But maybe just, let's just say three steps. A little faster even. I know this sub is getting a little boring. Let's see if we can go even faster with maybe just seven steps, but go super fast. Wow, ah, what is that? That was so cool, that little fill at the end. <laughs> ah, I love this. Oh, I haven't explained the last one yet. So this is more useful for uh, if you put something melodic in here, but it can also work with glitchy stuff or if you put like vocals in here or drums. So this will just make the simpler not just trigger one note at a time, but two, three, four, or five at the same time, and then this decides how far those are apart, like how many slices. To make this visible a little bit better, I'm gonna change it from transient to region slice mode. So now it's gonna slice it in however many equally sized slices, up to 64. Which is great for vocals or pad type stuff, and you can sort of turn the slicer into a granular synth almost at that point. So you see how it's going one, two, one, two three, four, five? If I now say poly trigger and set this to maybe here, now it's triggering three at once. But they're like overlapping, so I might say, hey, make them like five slices apart. Now we see this group of three moving along, uh, can make them up to an octave apart. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of tell what's going on. So sometimes, especially if it's like a more thin type of glitchy sound that you have, or there's a lot of silence in your file, then maybe this might actually be really useful. And lastly, you can randomize all of these parameters, these randomizable parameters that are on the inside that are like hidden, all at once if you want to. So if you hit Command K, then you're in like keyboard mapping mode and you can click these little R buttons here and then press a key on your keyboard that you want to link to those and it can be the same key for all of these. So I'm gonna do for pitch glitch, I'm gonna do R, auto panner, I don't want to randomize, chop generator, why not? Also hit R, glitch generator, R, phrase gen, yup, uh, poly trigger stays normal. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna just turn you halfway up and you on and you on and you on and a little bit 
biased upwards to higher pitches. Okay, I'll play it, then I'll stop, press R, and then I'll play it again. Because you won't really see anything changing here, but it does change. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, what does that sound like without the glitch? And then once you have something you like, you can obviously just go ahead and maybe you just automate the glitch thing in and out at certain moments where it fits better. Like as a fill or something, as like a variation at the end. I might do one or two more. Let's do one more super erratic fast one. Here's another example where I used one of those pitch mapped glitchy files in the same setup. Just play around with the phrase generator for fun. Ah, oh, this last bit here, some really cool glitches. Switch that to synced and uh, maybe 16th notes. And then for these little fills, like these little variations at the end, you can go into the MIDI and try some other notes above C1 and then just see what sounds good. Because it'll hit different slices every time. That's nice. And maybe for that one, we also find a variation. Ooh. And maybe da, 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 da. Like one, two, three, four. Let's just try that. Maybe further down. That's kind of nice. If you want them to be like actually super staccato as they are here, you might have to turn the fade out a little bit down. You can still also like mess with the gate length. Then it gets super short and choppy. It kind of happens to all of them. So maybe you can, if you want to, you can like automate any of these controls just to have more movement and more variation in the pattern. Also, I feel like something melodic might actually profit from using the poly trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I love it. And just like before, we could do Command K and then link the glitch generator to R and the pattern generator to R and then just hit R and see what happens. Oh, I like that one. It's like super triplety. The only downside is if you're working with something melodic in here, um, you probably won't want to use the pitch glitch thing because then whatever melodic stuff you have is just going to get like pitched around like crazy and it's probably going to be out of key. Doesn't say that you could still get cool results this way, but this like pitch glitch device here uh, takes control of the transposition knob on the simpler. So if you want to gain control back over this knob, you can just delete this one out of the rack and now you can transpose your sample up into the right key. Here are some other cool examples that I've made using this technique. I 
kind of still want to make some additional um, randomizers in the middle here, like maybe one for frequency shifting, maybe one that can like give the gate some sort of sequenced steps so that some slices are shorter, some slices are a little longer. I think that would be cool. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> uh, this one's actually pretty neat, I think. It's a bit messy, but it's kind of fun too. Sounds like some futuristic laser rifle. Alright, for this one I've actually automated like the free rate and how many steps are going to be added. This gives you like some more variation and control over this loop, I think. Straight up eighth notes, that works kind of nicely. Try maybe a different part in this. Let me exchange that random noise sample with like one of my buff eater exports. I'm gonna put these up for download too. So it's like a big file of lots of bass glitches. So yeah, if you run into this problem that all those cuts, even though this is at like 93% gate, sound super short, you might just have to reduce the sensitivity for the transients because you might have too many really thin slices that are just super short. Oh, and also it's playing this at plus 21 transposition, so I'm just gonna turn that off for now. <laughs> turn this automation off. So yeah, sometimes the glitch generator is a little too much, especially if it like sounds something like this. That's a bit much, but you can just blend this in every once in a while, like. Kind of like that. And just have to like draw the automation for this. We can make it even more straightforward and repetitive, but maybe it sounds good if it's just like four steps. So every quarter note, so just like four steps on eighth notes, rather long, little bit of fade out, tiny bit of fade in. Oh, it's re-triggering here. No, I'm just gonna have you go straight, like stop here, and then do this one, two, three times. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> it sounds so goofy, but it also sounds kind of cool. Let's add glitches. It's kind of badass, I kind of like that. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is dope. All right, I gotta stop, otherwise this is just all I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. So you can also make cool material for this type of slicer setup if you just put like a bunch of base loops or single base one shots from like whatever pack or your own into a row and then just consolidate them to like a big audio file. And the more variety of sounds you've got in there, the better. And then like the cooler the output is kind of going to be, I think. I've got these somewhat color basey loops here that I've been working on. <laughs> And they're all kind of in the same key. So I'm just gonna drag these out here and put them in like, put them together. That one's nice. That one has drums in it, but maybe that's gonna be cool. Let's just do it. Those are all pretty similar. I'm just gonna grab that one. Yeah. Yeah, that one's a bit different. Yeah, why not? That one's cool. All right, cool, I think that's a good amount. Uh, so shift, select them all, then command J. That's one big file and then drop you in here. And C1, that's gonna do, do, do then a variation one that's like up here and then do, 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 
like some syncopated stuff that's like de -de -de -de. there we go okay this is just going to be the pattern and then loop that ah it sounds like some crazy pan flute this cool. Let's grab some drums, uh, but different ones just so we change it up a little bit. Let's do 128. And they're probably going to be a bit loud, so I'm going to turn those down and throw a safety limiter on the master. I feel like it's a better pattern if we go kind of like this, then you repeat that again. Yeah. An extra little glitchy moment here. And then at the end here, maybe some down to down to down to down to maximum glitch. <laughs> I'm just going to add a sub. Yeah, it's not the best baseline in the world, but just so we have something in the back. All right, let's create some alterations to this pattern. Let's try a different one. That's kind of neat, I like that. Could you please pluck along in eighth notes as well? Try different rhythm, or first of all, just like try reducing the amount of steps. And try a different position. Definitely need like a low cut after this, though, since we have our separate sub. And then you can still like process this however else you want. Like, I feel maybe a reverb that is 100% wet in parallel with a super pumpy auto pan after it. Could be nice. And just make sure there's like no low end in that reverb. A little bit longer and... Maybe even don't pump like this, but maybe just hover. You can also, you can combine auto pans in a series to like create something that's like like a more complex motion. We've got it hovering at 16th notes and pumping at quarter notes. Let's try some other positions and some other patterns. And also, I, I do like this pan flute thing. Let's turn the sync off and also try around with this. A bit much. Maybe, uh, maybe change you to region. It's like weirdly wonky offbeat, but also kind of cool. And just for good measure, let's also try this with a vocal. Actually, yeah, let's try that. The still kids a cappella here from every day. like this. Ah, this is nice. could also set it to repeating like a single slice uh, on 16th notes or really fast and then just like select different slices here with the MIDI notes. Just find like the cutest ones. Nice, and then once we have that, 
we could probably we can either leave it like this. You could automate the rate to like speed up or slow down for certain ones, or maybe even turn off the sync, use the free rate, and now go like. You can also go into the MIDI effects and the envelope MIDI here. It's like an envelope you put in front of instruments and then this gets triggered whenever a MIDI note comes in. And we could link that, just gotta make sure the velocity here is off, amount to 100%, and then just give it a little bit of a fade. Oh, just fade out should be enough and get a little bit of a shape like this. And let's link that to the free rate. This is now modulating it in the inverse way that I wanted it to, but it also sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna change these values up here. And then you could still have like some slight variation on how this effect is happening by then automating just the attack or the decay time on this envelope MIDI. Maybe, maybe the first time around it's doing it pretty quickly. Maybe first time around it just goes. And then second time it's gonna take a little longer. And third time a little faster again. Yeah. Only important detail here is you need the automation to reach the new setting you want the decay or attack time to be at before the note gets triggered, because if you modulate any of these parameters while the envelope is playing, it has no effect on it. It's gonna make sure right before that MIDI note it is set to those new parameters. That's just how it is. And you can link multiple things to this one envelope. So it would maybe make sense to also link the gate so that, so that maybe it gets shorter over time. So maybe start at 50%. Right, it's getting a little messy, but you kind of get the idea. You can be really creative with all of these tools. There's also this weird setting here in the simpler where under controls you have a random pan. So every time a note gets triggered, it's gonna go randomly left or right or somewhere in between, which is kind of cool for fast stuff like this. Because now those vocal chops are like flying around your head, especially if you're wearing headphones, that sounds awesome. All right, enough of that. If you want to play around with this, I'll put a Dropbox link to this uh, slicer kind of preset thing uh, in the description, and it'll also contain like a bunch of long files that are useful for chopping up in there that you can just like throw at it and try it out. All right, that's it from me for today. Goodbye.